You are exalted above the names. Hallelujah. There is none like you. Under the voice of the You are exalted above the names. Hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temi Tayo. I'm a Christian content creator and I'm here once again to share from the Open Heavens Daily Devotional compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. E. Adeboye. And the reason I'm sharing from this particular Christian book is because the Lord instructed me to do so as I prepare to enter into the year 2020. So this is my fifth year of sharing from the Open Heavens and that's why we call it Season 5. And all those videos from 2020, they are all loaded on my YouTube channel. My handle on YouTube is Temi Agedo, which is right on the screen. I encourage you to visit my channel not only to view the old open heavens videos which are a great study guide but most importantly to view the open heavens for the current day and i know that will bless you exceedingly and while you're on my channel do not forget to subscribe and the lord bless you as you do subscribe like comment and share and god bless you now pastor adeboye led me to christ in october 1997 a few years back when i was in the university of lagos nigeria in west africa and pastor gives you a few scriptures from the bible and the memory verse and that helps you to understand the body of the text praise god so today is sunday january the 21st and i know many of us are gathered in church today you know for the service and i want to say a big thank you to the pastors for allowing me to share the open heavens with their congregation god bless you sirs and ma thank you so much um so we're continuing today's sunday january the 21st and um the title again is god's best friends part three god's best friends part three three so this is a four day series so we're going to round up tomorrow of course i will encourage you to view the other videos uh, other open heaven so you can have a a well-rounded understanding of what the spirit of god is teaching us now this topic is very very similar to the topic we shared in december titled god has favorite this is titled god's best friends part three and that one uh, the topic we shared was god has favorites and then there was um a, a another a follow-up called Peter the Rock and then John the Beloved. So those were God's favorites. And um, so I, I, I think we'll, we'll get the pop-up so you can watch those videos. So we'll give you a bright, wider understanding, God's best friends. Now in part one, Pastor was um, talking about, you know, God's best friends, you know, and how Abraham was um, believed God and was accounted unto him for righteousness and was called the friend of God. And he, Pastor mentioned other people like Moses, you know, one with whom I speak face to face, um, and uh, John and Peter. And then yesterday we spoke about Enoch. You know, Enoch was, that was amazing. Um, and today we're going to be looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 to 9. Yesterday, the pastor was saying that um, the people that are God's best friends are those who, who, um, have, who have great faith, who have, um, who 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 use their faith, who exercise their faith. Those are people that were, that have been classed as God's friends. And father of faith is definitely Abraham. I mean, there's his faith is you know changed his name from Abraham to Abraham. You know, at a hundred years old, that is real raw faith. Praise God. God's best friends, part three. And our scripture reading today is taken from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 to 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 to 9. And I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. And thus goes the reading of God's word. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 to 9. Just five verses. And thus goes the reading of God's word. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you believed, as the Lord gave each to each one? I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then he who plants is, so, so then neither, is, neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one would receive his own reward according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers, ye are God's field, and you are God's building. Okay, so, hmm. We, we know the, the verse that is very popular is that I planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So then he that, he, he that plants, neither is he anything, nor he that waters, but of God 
who gives the increase. I planted, Paul was talking, he said, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So what he was rebuking the Corinthians about is that, you know, some will say, oh, I'm of Paul and I'm of Apollos. And he says, you, you, are, uh, you are still carnal, for where there are, this is the verse 3, if, a, a verse above, he says, for you're still carnal, for where there are, there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? And we see this a lot today, you know, where uh, people think that my pastor is the only pastor, every other, my pastor and others, you know, um, and they think, oh, um, my pastor is the best pastor, you know, it, it, should, it should not be like that. My church is the best church. Every other church, they don't, they are all fake. It's only my church that is, you know, that's, you. Paul is saying that you are carnal. He says, I'm of Apollos. Somebody says, oh, I'm of um, this this church and I'm of that church, forgetting that both Paul and Apollos or pastor this or bishop that all are being used by God for the for, for the growth and um, the Christianization of the nations of the world for for the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you you if you are saying oh my church I, my my bishop is the you know you feel like you always it's just about your you know your leader your every other person is not a man of God or a woman of God just your own pastor you are canal you are canal oh he's the only good pastor he's the only one i no 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 um paul I'm, of uh, apollos you are still canal that's what the bible says who then is paul and who is apollos but ministers through whom you believed as the lord gave to each one you know so um somebody said there are going to be surprises in heaven because the people that you expect to see will not be there and the people that you do not expect to see will be there okay so god used Paul, God used Apollos, God is using Pastor Adeboye, God is using so many other men of God. You know, this is what Elijah thought. Elijah thought that, oh, I'm the only one that is left. Oh, they have killed all your prophets. All of them are gone. I'm the only one. I only, you know. Um, and God said to him, no, no, I have 7,500 prophets who have not bowed the knee to bow, you know. So you're not the only one. And that's a form of pride. You think that you are the only one. Nobody besides you. You are the hero. No. You know, so he says, neither he that plants is anything, nor he that waters, but God who gives the increase. Amen. God's best friends, part three. Hallelujah. Now, the memory verse is titled, is, is from Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. So Jesus' prayer, our Lord's prayer, what we call our Lord's prayer, you know. Um, that King Jesus was praying that thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it, is, as it is in heaven. So the focus here is the kingdom of God, God's eternal plan for mankind. That's That was Jesus' Jesus' focus. The pastor says many people want to be one of God's best friends so that whenever he, they ask him for something, he will do it for them immediately. This is surely one of the benefits of being God's best friends. However, those who really become such care more about him than they care about themselves so some people want to get close to god they want to get close to god so when they ask god for anything he will answer and that's true when you the closer you are to god when you ask him for anything he will do it immediately but god is bigger than what he gives that is saying here that the people that are going to be god's best friends are those who care more about god than themselves it's, it's not about you know what god can give god is bigger than what he gives you know, don't look for what is in his hand, look for what is in his heart. You know, so the priorities of a man are known from his prayer, from his prayer points. If your prayer points are always selfish, God will not make you one of his best friends. In fact, he will not answer your prayers when they are born out of your lust. You know, James, that's in James 4 3, where he was saying, You ask not, you, you, and you receive not because you, you ask and miss that you may feel it on your lust. So, <laughs> Um, some people just oh, oh just praying for husband just Lord let me get married that's the prayer point the fasting is all about I must marry I must not once have they prayed for the kingdom of God not once have they prayed that the gospel will go around the world it's about my child I want a child God this year don't let it pass me by don't let me be ashamed don't let me it's always just about you those are selfish prayers and such people um cannot be God's best friends, you know, in, uh, do you understand? So 
God's heartbeat, what, what is paining God is what must be paining us. Amen. What is, what is on God's heart? What is on God's heart is what, you know, if we want to become God's best friends, we must be touched by the feelings of his own infirmity. In other words, what is hurting God? What is, what is uppermost in his mind right now are the things that should touch me. Pastor was saying that people that are going to be God's best friends are people that, that their own needs are secondary. It's what is on the heart that I may do all that is in God's heart. God said, I'm going to raise me a faithful priest hmm, who will do all that is in my heart and in my mind. Amen. And that's what I want. That's what he said about Samuel, that I'm going to raise a, a, they that honor me, I will honor. And those that like me, those that despise me will be lightly esteemed. And he was going to raise a priest who will do all that is in his heart and in his mind. God has an agenda. And when we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all of those other things will be added to us. You understand? Let's make God's business our business. And then he will make our business his business. You know, so, if your prayers are, are your prayers selfish? It's only about this husband, this husband praying and fasting, sowing huge seeds, you know, for this man. Why don't we take our focus off that and look unto God and follow him and do all that is in his heart and in his mind? And then we we'll become God's best friends. And all other things, including the child and the husband and the wife and the car and all the other, other things will be, will be added unto us. Let's pack now with God. Those who will be one of God's best friends are people who pray God's prayers and want to partner with him to establish his will on earth. They are people who say regularly, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When such people go to pray, they don't go with preconceived prayer points at all times. They make a habit of going into his presence with a body to hear from him about what he wants to be done on earth and to pray those things into existence. It's, um, you know, it's more about, um, Lord, what would you have me do? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What, do you understand? God, it, it's, it's more, it, God, the focus is God and not their needs and not our needs. If we want to become God's best friend, you see, because if you have a friend who only comes to you <laughs> to, you know, when they need, they're close to you because what they can get from you, that's not a balanced friendship. You understand? But when somebody is your friend and they love you for who you are and um, and what is paining you is paining them. When you cry, God, you know, they, they feel your pain. That they, they are your friends, you know. They may not have anything to do. They, they are just there for you. They are, your, they are, they are more concerned about what is in your heart, your friendship, and what they can get from you. I, I, okay, I, I'll give it a, a short testimony. Even now and then, God needs someone to stand in the gap for his people. He needs someone to pray about a particular situation so that he can have the legal right to step into that situation. If you're an intercessor, always willing to pray God's will into existence, he will draw you closer to himself. He will tell you, tell you things that he usually doesn't tell others and show you sides of himself that others don't see. He will even reveal his burdens to you. Only those who are willing to share in God's burdens can become one of his best friends i remember um um reverend chris he he gave a testimony about how one day you know he was praying and as he began to pray the lord appeared before him you know and began to talk to him and then he noticed that the countenance of the lord was saddened and he said lord what is it and the lord said that you know um after all he had done on the cross that his people were still being oppressed by sickness and God gave him the tax to begin to take healing to the nations. You understand? That was God's heartbeat. So you see, um, Pastor says, yes, he will tell you, you see, he says, um, every now and then God needs someone to stand in the gap for his people. He needs someone to pray about a particular situation so that he can have the legal right to step into that situation. If you are an intercessor, always willing to pray God's will into his existence, he will draw closer to you. He will tell you things that he usually doesn't tell others and show you sides of himself that you, others don't see. He will even reveal his burdens to you. And that's a very good example. Only those who are willing to share in God's burdens can become one of his best friends. Some people just look at, ah, Lord, what's the problem? Ah, it is well. Lord, please don't forget my house friend. I pray concerning my house. You see, it's, it's all about 
meanwhile, um, Jesus Christ, our Lord, said, don't worry about what you will eat or what you will drink. We should not worry about what we will eat and what we will drink or what we will wear. For our Heavenly Father knows that we need all these things. You know, if he, if he clothes the, the bird, the lily of the field, which is today looking so beautiful and then tomorrow is thrown into oven, how much more will he clothe us and feed us and give us the husband and the wife and the children? Oh, you of little faith. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all those things will be added unto you. So if we want to become God's best friends, we must be interceding, not only for me, myself, and I, and my family, but also for Christians in other nations, you know, where, where there's persecution. You know, I must be touched by the body of Christ. It's not just my church alone. It's the, there's, it's, we're talking about the church universal. You know, we must be praying. You know, we must, we must be burdened, not just for ourselves. Praise the Lord. In Matthew 26, 36 to 39, Jesus' best friends saw his sorrow. They saw him in his time of distress at the Garden of Gethsemane when he was crying for God to take away the cup from him and more importantly, to let his will be done. Jesus was one who invited them to watch him. They were his prayer partners. So in this Matthew 26, you know, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane and, you know, his 12 apostles, 12 disciples, they were, they were disciples then, they were with him. He took Peter, James, and John. Those were his favorites, you know. Even when he went to raise Lazarus and uh, Jairus' daughter, he took the 12 along with him. But when he entered into the room to go and pray for the, the maiden, he took only Peter, James, and John. You understand? He took only Peter, James, and John. So those were his close friends. And when he got to the Garden of Gethsemane, when all of them, you know, were, and he went, he, 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 they were sleeping, he called Peter, James, and John, and they watched him pray. And that was why they were able to tell us that as he prayed, his sweat was like drops of blood that fell on the ground. They heard his prayer. They heard his heart cry. He was crying to the Lord, you know? So they were privy. It was, he, he showed his vulnerability to his friends. These were his close friends, Peter, James, and John. And he allowed them to watch were his prayer partners. And he asked them to pray with him, even though they fell asleep. But, you know, those are the, his prayer partners. You know, they were, they were close to him. They were his best friends. Those are the people that he trusted that they could carry on the work. Can God invite you to watch with him over a nation, his church, or any, or any matter at that? Can you forget all your prayer points and just keep praying for the will of God to be fulfilled like Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane? Do you care about God more than you care about yourself? So let's put, do you understand? So if we want to be God's best friend, we must be, for lack of a better word, touched by the feelings of his infirmity. You know, you know, um, in heaven, when there was no one to open the, the book, you know, um, John began to cry and, and the angel said, weep not. The lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. You understand? So we must be touched by the feelings of his infirmity. Praise God. The prayer point is pray for the body of Christ with specific reference to Christians facing persecution across the world. You know something? Hmm. In Nigeria, in northern Nigeria, Christians are being killed. They are, they are being killed. Um... And, you know, we just feel that, oh, maybe the people in the South, you know, it doesn't touch us, you know. So, ah, God help them, oh, God help them. But you see, there's something that Mordecai said. He said, don't think you shall escape in the palace where you are. For if you do not, uh, you know, if you do not rise up for the deliverance of the, the, for Israel, God will raise help from another place. So don't, we mustn't get too comfortable. Because if, <laughs> or if we don't pray for Jerusalem and for Israel, we think, ah, it's fire away. You know, God will always you know god will always help them you know because they are you know the jewish nation if we don't pray for them we think that we escape where we are you know we must pray for the peace of jerusalem and pray for the body of christ with specific reference to christians who are facing persecution across the world let's pray thank you heavenly father in jesus name heavenly father we thank you almighty god thank you because you are lord jesus is lord in heaven on earth and under the earth we thank you because you have given jesus christ a name above every other name father we pray for Christians all around the world who are facing persecution in India, in Nigeria, in northern Nigeria, from people that hate the, the Lord, we pray, Almighty God, that you protect them, that your hand of protection will be upon the body of Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, every plan of the wicked, Almighty God, to attack churches, to persecute Christians, 
Father, we ask Almighty God that the Spirit of God will raise up a standard against them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, we bring their evil plans to naught, that they are exposed in the mighty name of Jesus and that there's confusion in their camp in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for Israel, Almighty God, that, Lord, you bring peace to Israel. We pray also for the Palestinians, Lord, that you would enter into their midst and bring deliverance to that nation in the mighty name of Jesus and at the light of the glory of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ will shine forth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We pray that a door will be opened for the gospel in Palestine and in Israel in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to me. God bless you. I've gone over my time. Thank you, Pastor, for sharing this daily devotional in your church. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And while you're on my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and have a beautiful service. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. My name again is Sister Temitayo, and God bless you. Have a nice service.